Hello, it is Monday, November 22nd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle, and today's Monday puzzle was constructed by Stella Zavatovsky, and I'm pointing that out right now at the very beginning of the video before all the preamble because I recognized Stella's name. She, in addition to being a crossword constructor, she posts to Twitter with a very enjoyable daily routine. Every day she posts a cryptic crossword clue that she has constructed, and then the following day, I believe, she um, posts the answer to the clue. And so I thought today, in honor of her Monday puzzle in the New York Times, we would take a look at the most recent cryptic crossword clue she has posted to Twitter, and I thought I would solve it, and I will share with you the answer at the end of the preamble, right before we begin the crossword. And this appears to be yesterday's clue, and that's because here in the UK, it's the morning, and so I assume she's somewhere in the United States, and it's in the middle of the night for her, so she's not yet posted today's, so we'll do yesterday's, that's fine. The clue is, I, with endemic destruction, create a cure, perhaps. And this is an eight-letter answer. In a cryptic crossword clue, you always get the number of letters given to you. I mean, you could figure it out from the grid, but the reason it's useful is because we know it's a single word. It's not two words. If it were two words, it would say something like five comma three to indicate a five-letter word and a three-letter word, whereas in New York Times-style crossword cluing, we don't get that information. Um, and cryptic crosswords, if you're not familiar, they tend to be um, much more complex than sort of traditional general knowledge crossword clues. And I will explain how this one works in a few moments. But first, let me mention my own Twitter account, speaking of, of crossword Twitter, for uh, this series. It is at The Daily Solve on Twitter, and each day uh, there's a post about the series. And um, there's also the Patreon campaign, which you can join by going to patreon.com slash daily solve, a link to which is also in the description field underneath each video. And there you can get a whole bevy of bonus solve videos, including my weekly mini crossword speed solves, the um, boss words fall themeless league competition puzzles, those very, very tricky themeless puzzles that I've been solving. And um, also bonus channel access at the Daily Solve Discord chat server. So if you'd like to chat with other folks who watch this series about the New York Times crossword, other crosswords, other puzzles, and crossword construction, you can do that. And there's a link in the description field underneath each video. Anyone can join it, and you get an extra channel if you uh, subscribe to the Patreon. So let's discuss, before we get onto the puzzle, uh, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's. We have a confirmation from Kathy Swope that indeed, Lacrosse was a tribal game played by Eastern and Plains Native Americans. It has been significantly changed by European colonizers into the game that is played today. So there we go. And we had a couple of comments about prime numbers. I was sort of speculating aloud yesterday. Is one considered a prime number? And two commenters inform me, not, not really. Umbra says, math teacher here, one is generally not considered a prime number as it has only one factor one, whereas prime numbers have two, one and the number itself. One being a prime number would also break other things in math unless specifically excluded, like the unique prime factorization of a number. And Duke Garland covers similar ground and also adds, when answering whether one is a prime or composite number, mathematicians usually give it a separate category, like super prime. Primes have exactly two divisors. Composite numbers have more, and one only has one. So it's primier than primes, super prime. The term, however, is not used much because it's useless. One is simply one. You don't really need another way to refer to it. So there we go. Thank you for filling me in. Ben Ward also clarifies something. Till, the word T-I-L-L, -L, two L's, is actually a separate and slightly older word to until. It originally meant to, but came to be used as a synonym for until. So you can correctly use till, T-I-L-L, -L, with no apostrophe, or Till, T-I-L, with an apostrophe, being a contraction of until. The clued 1996 Salma Hayek crime thriller From Dusk Till Dawn does indeed use till two L's in its title. So, thank you. And uh, I think that's it. That's all I have from yesterday. So let's return to Stella Zavatovsky's cryptic clue from yesterday, and let's solve it. 
I, with endemic destruction, create a cure, perhaps. Now, uh, I'll try and quickly explain how cryptic clues work. Almost all of the time, the vast majority of the time, in a cryptic clue, you have a definition and some wordplay, and each of them explain the answer, but in different ways. The definition explains it in a traditional, literal way, being a definition or a synonym, and the wordplay is the cryptic word. So almost always, the definition will be found at the beginning or the end of the clue. So the definition of, of this clue could be I. It could be I with endemic, maybe, or I with endemic destruction. It could be perhaps, or it could be a cure, perhaps, or create a cure, perhaps. Something at the end, a word or a phrase at one of the ends of this. In this case, um, I believe it is a cure, perhaps. I believe that is actually the definition, which means the word play is I with endemic destruction, create. So we're looking for an eight-letter word that means a cure, perhaps. And in this case, um, well, let me explain how I get there before I tell you what it is. So we have the letter I, the word I, and in this case, it is simply the letter I. That's that's what it will be used as. It will simply be putting the letter I into the answer. With means we're combining the I with endemic. So we have the letters in I and endemic, and destruction is telling us that we're going to take the letters in I and endemic and destroy them. We're going to explode them. We're going to blow them up. We're going to anagram them, rearrange them into a new word. And if you rearrange the letters in I and endemic, you get the word medicine. So I with endemic destruction creates a cure, perhaps. A cure, perhaps, being medicine. And that's the answer. So um, this is... The, this is um, one of the things I like about Stella's clues that she posts each day, they're fairly approachable as far as cryptic crosswords go. I mean, there's very little that's approachable or accessible about cryptic crosswords generally, and I am far from an accomplished cryptic crossword solver. I'd like to get better. But she tends to post uh, clues on the more approachable side, which I very much appreciate. And so that's how to solve this one. And now we can move on to solving many more clues written by Stella Zavitovsky and edited, as always, by Will Shorts in this Monday crossword. These will be much more straightforward than the cryptic one. So are we ready to get started? I would say we are. Okay. The bottom of a shoe is a sole, the sole of a shoe. If one had something on, you could say one wore it, as in clothing. An insurance worker could be an agent, an insurance agent. Let's see if that if that is confirmed with some crosses. A primate with no tail. Um, a primate with no tail. An ape, I suppose. A monkey does have a tail. An ape does not, right? So that, that works. Talks on and on could be gabs. And others in Latin, et al, literally et al and others. And we have abbreviation here. Because um, what is all? Is it Ali? I think, A-L-I-I? I may be correct. I'm not, I may be incorrect, I should say. Well, I may be correct as well. I suppose I suppose I'm saying I may be correct and I may be incorrect are essentially the same. They have a slightly different implication, but, but you're saying the same thing. Anyway, the river on which Cleopatra cruised uh, surely is the Nile. And if one couldn't keep a secret, one told. So let's look at what this is filled in here. Outdoor party locale is a patio. And a toy that goes up slow and comes down fast is a sled. Wow, that's very clever. Slow process of taking the sled up the hill and the much faster and more exciting process of it coming down. That's very good. All right, let's check the crosses here. A living room seat is a sofa, something I recently had to buy Why? because when we moved into our new flat, our existing sofa wouldn't fit through the door. All right, an iridescent gem must be an opal. Iridescent meaning, I suppose, the way it sort of sparkles when light shines through it. A meathead. I don't know, a loaf. A, a lunk head? I mean, a lunk? Loaf? Let's, let's come back to it. Abbreviation before a date on a business shingle. Probably, before a date, probably established, which I usually think of as ESTD. 
stabbed, E-S-T-A-D, a stab. I always think of this as being a four-letter abbreviation, but perhaps a stab for established. Let's let's check the crosses here. Work by a composer in looks like opus, often works by composers in the art music tradition, will be given opus numbers to easily refer to the different works across their the sort of corpus. Um, here we have a pastime for armchair sports enthusiasts. Um, armchair sports enthusiasts, this is probably fantas a fantasy sport. In this case, it looks like fantasy baseball. Um, something I have never played, but uh, I know is very popular. Probably a pretty American pastime. I suppose Japanese as well, probably. I bet you get this in Japan. I know fit baseball is big there. So a meathead lunk. So I don't that I'm familiar with lunk as a as a a standalone word. I think I'm I've heard lunkhead before, but this says meathead. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm sort of combining a few things, but I'm not I'm not really sure I'm familiar with lunk as a as a term used in this way, but that doesn't mean anything, just means I'm not familiar. A corrosive substance, an alkali, I would think. And a question to a suspected culprit. Was it you, based on these crosses, I would think. And then a skating leap is an axle. I think an axle is when a skater, an ice skater, leaps up and sort of spins around on a vertical axis. I think that's an axle. Uh, here we have popular acne medication must be oxy. I don't think I would have known that, but sounds plausible. And it starts up again as a computer. A computer reboots when it starts up again. And a pal of Jerry on Seinfeld would be Elaine. Elaine Bennis. Bennis, I think her name was. The character's name, I mean. Played by Julie Louis-Dreyfus. All right. Exxon Mobil's business is, of course, oil. And <laughs> to speak indistinctly is to slur one's syllables. To slur one's syllables, I guess. Sounds weird. Um, to close as a jacket is to button up, and the as a jacket is just letting us know that this is a phrase that would be used with a jacket as opposed to, say, closing a door. You wouldn't say button up a door, um, but you would say button up a jacket, and I suppose this is just making the clue a little bit easier for us to arrive at, especially on a Monday. It's smoothing our solve a little. So 18 down, we have a grad. So grad, in this case, short for graduate. And we get the abbreviation alum for alumnus or alumna, a um, someone who attended the school in question. And an unidentifiable protein could be a mystery meat. And so I wonder, I wonder if we have a theme going on here. We have fantasy baseball and mystery meat. So it looks like the theme perhaps is something around. Um, how would you put this sort of speculative things or imagined things or hypotheticals, something something like that, something yet to be known or something imagined, I suppose. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure how you would, I feel as though fantasy and mystery, we can sort of intuitively understand what puts them, what, what relates them, but I'm, I'm finding it hard to concretely summarize in a pithy way. But perhaps that will be our theme. It is, after all, a themed, uh, you know, the Sunday through Thursday are themed crosswords, meaning they all sort of have some bit of subject matter or a mechanic that ties ties a number of clues together. Anyway, a ruler in pre-communist Russia would be a czar. And what is this? A group that extends from Canada to Chile. Um, is this the Organization of American States, perhaps? I'm actually not sure. I think it might be. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me. Let's keep going. A heap for burning would be a pyre, as in a funeral pyre, one of the more commonly used, uh, common usages of pyre. Lustful, informally. Not sure offhand. Uh-oh, there's the doorbell. Sorry. I'm going to pause this for a moment, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I apologize for that delay. Well, I suppose it wasn't a delay for you, but for that tiny blip. 
Um, I'm the only one home, so I had to get the door. All right, let's resume. Here we have Lustful Informally. I was going to move on for now. And we have not just a few, would be many. Here we have come next. And for something to come next, it will ensue. It will follow, in other words. And one who's 18 or older, I think in, in many societies, that would be an adult. Ah, and here we have lustful informally would be randy, a sort of slang term for lusty, an informal term. And like an impatient and competitive personality, uh, this has actually come up in the crossword, I think a couple times in the last few weeks, type A, a type A personality. And that fills in some crosses. When a plane is due in, in brief, ETA, the estimated time of arrival. And the Christmas season, which is fast approaching, the Yuletide. Okay, finally starts talking, could be opens up. And let's let's return to some of the across clues that we've skipped over so far. What a grocery scanner scans for short could be a, uh, a UPC, which might be universal product code. If I had to guess at how to unpack UPC, that would be my guess. We'll see. Someone will tell me if I'm wrong. An instruction for a violinist. Uh, but let's check this cross. They're paid to play. Could be professionals, pros, let's see. And then that would allow instruction for a violinist to be an up bow. So when playing a string instrument such as a violin, you can bow up or bow down. And that might be indicated to a violinist in a score, or the violinist might make a choice about how to do it. And it's important because they have slightly different tenor, but also the point at which you change from up bowing to down bowing and, and vice versa that sort of breaks the completely seamless continuity of the notes. So it's, it's, it's an important thing for a violinist to, to consider. All right, a dehydrated plum is a prune. Things weighed against benefits. Um, well, it ends with an S. And here we have sightseeing on wheels, which could be a bus tour. Ah. Sorry, this should have been more obvious. Things weighed against benefits are costs, a cost-benefit analysis, for instance. How much will this course of action or product cost versus the benefit it will provide? And here we have life, like draft beers, they are on tap as opposed to bottled or canned. And now in the operating room is um, stat, as soon as possible. And I think it says in the operating room, which suggests a sort of medical context. And I do think that is a word that does does originate I think, as maybe sort of medical slang, hospital slang, but has migrated into broader usage in, in colloquial English speech. I think that's the case. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't want someone to quote me on it, but I believe that to be true. An international group that has no members in Europe or North America. Um, well, in four letters starting with OP, I would think OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And what do we have here? A holy site in Jerusalem. Well, the Western Wall, now how does that... I would have assumed this was going to be another theme answer, but how does that fit with our theme? Ah, okay. I was completely incorrect with my interpretation of the theme. It has nothing to do, I don't think, with... I was thinking we were going to get something like enigma variations, another another phrase that takes something mysterious or fantastical and then uses it um, in a common phrase. But uh, no, it's nothing to do with that. It is um, film genres or or something to that effect. We have fantasy, mystery, western. So um, maybe we'll get I don't know sci-fi. Although sci-fi isn't something I could imagine you could easily put into a, um, a larger phrase. We'll have to see. But in any case, that's the, um, I think that is the theme. I was, I was not quite on the money before. So let's use that with some crosses here. Minnesota's St. Blank College, that would be St. Olaf College, I'm pretty sure, given the, the four, four letters and the crosses we have. Enter en masse as a car. Um, and here we have Baby Cobra comic Wong. I don't know Baby Cobra. I don't know if that's a comedy special or a book or something, but um, I've heard of Ali Wong, and that must be the answer. 
So enter on mass as a car, pile into as a car. I don't necessarily know that that needs to be a car. I feel as though you entering almost anything on mass you could describe as piling into, but I suppose it is commonly more commonly used in the context of cars. Yeah. So similar to the uh, clothes as a jacket, we have enter on mass as a car. A little bit of a help. In a terrible way. So this is an adverb. I was thinking of it as an adjective. In other words, that person is in a terrible way. That person is doing badly. But in fact, this itself is the is the adjective like badly, not doing badly, but badly, in this case, awfully, in a terrible way. I suspect anyway, that's what it is. Let's see if this cross works. Hairstylist, fancily. Uh, so fancily could be a coiffeur. Oops, from the French, obviously, or certainly. We could imagine that being um, someone who coiffs your hair, someone who um, styles your hair into do a trendy coif or something. Coiffer. College military program or call. So we see that college is abbreviated call, C O L L, um, for college military program in the United States. ROTC, which I can I never quite remember the, what that stands for. I think it's something like, I, someone I think told me this in a video maybe a month ago, and I'm trying to remember. I think it's Reserve Officer Training Corps, I think. Again, as with UPC, if I had to guess, it would be that, but I wouldn't want someone to um, rely on me for it. Most pleasant, I mean, could be nicest. That seems like the most straightforward answer here. Does that work here? School in Fort Worth, TCU, Texas, something university. I don't know. TCU, I don't know. Let's leave that for now. Let's, let's look elsewhere. Where inhaled air goes, it goes into a lung. The very idea, indeed, perhaps, although that looks pretty bad with R, so maybe not. 51 down, find a second function for to reuse something in I need, hmm. Not seeing it. What about this? Old glory for one. A flag. Is that the Confederate flag? Maybe. Uh, and then creature that goes ribbit is a frog, of course. To run easily. So I think this means, I think this is a lope, a sort of easy gait, an easy running gait. Not, not a sprint, but a nice easy run. I think that's what that means, what that's getting at with run easily. And you said it, brother, could be amen. Actress Terry, Terry Gar, I recognize the name. Ah, and here is our revealer before we've even finished the theme. And I think we can see what this last theme is. What the start of 1729, 45 or 61 across is in a bookstore is a genre. So exactly as, well, exactly as I thought after, I thought exactly the wrong thing. Um, and here we have, what is this? Spanish or French, but not German. So what unites Spanish and French, but not German? Spanish and French are both Romance languages. And so we have Romance. And so my, my guess actually was a little bit off. I was say, I think I said film genres, fantasy, mystery, when, and then we got, when we got Western. And this says in a bookstore. So these are book genres. And I think that is indeed, once we've added Romance, I think that's, that is, these would be more accurately called book genres because we don't, I mean, you could have a romance film, but that's a genre that is much more associated with books. You have romance books, romance fiction. In films, we have romantic comedies, rom-coms. You, you, I guess you do much less frequently refer to ro straight romance films. It's obviously such things exist, but it's not a genre that's used as commonly. And here we have Tosca or Torrento. I forget if it's Torrento or Torrentote, but in, in any case, those are operas. Um, each Well, each one of them is an opera, and this is an or clue. So even though we have two examples of operas, we're only referring to one opera or the other opera. So always keep a lookout for that. The most pleasant. It must be nicest. So TCU, I don't know this school. Texas Christian University, maybe? I don't know. 
Uh, Fort Worth is in Texas. That's why I assume Tief to be Texas. Um, opening for a coin could be a coin slot. Member of a DC squad. Um, this is a uh, reference to the Congress, the United States Congress. Uh, the sort of progressive squad, including the congressperson Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, so AOC, as she is commonly dubbed, and then Tickle Me Elmo, well, not commonly dubbed, she was dubbed, and is to which she's commonly referred. So Tickle Me Elmo maker once, Tyco, toy manufacturer, never would have in a million years known that Tyco made Tickle Me Elmo, but uh, I do recognize the brand name, so it must be correct. Um, here we have speak to a deaf person in a way, could be to sign, and otherwise could be else. Colorado skiing mecca. I think veil sounds familiar to me. And objects in an Easter hunt are obviously eggs. Surrealist Magritte, this would be Rene Magritte, the, um, the artist. Uh, and that fills in the very idea. I never, there we go. Couldn't quite, couldn't quite get there. And, get there. and in fact, this is a very precisely clued uh, phrase because I would say both the very idea and I never, each of them is a slightly quaint way to express a sensation of being affronted. They, they, they have very similar, very similar tenor. They both are a little bit dated. They both suggest a sort of frumpy person who is struck by something. So I, I'm only pointing this out, not because I'm saying that you, you need this to solve the clue. I just always appreciate when bits of slang or colloquial speech or idiomatic expressions are matched that closely between the clue and the answer when they, they really do, they, they match not just in literal meaning, but also in the particular connotations and the sort of sense and the emotional feeling around them. I always find that to be a nice little bit of, of um, rigor in the clue. Anyway, I am... Um, I do not have an internet connection right now, so I'm expecting this to not give me the streak, the gold streak thing at the end. We'll see. Maybe it will. No, it didn't. Gave me the blue. Wow, that was loud. Um, gave me the blue one, but I assume when I reconnect to the internet, I will get my streak. So I'm not worried about it because I expected it today. In any case, that was The Monday Puzzle by Stella Zavatovsky. I suspect there will be people who find uh, people not from the U.S. or a U.S. cultural context who might find this one a little bit trickier. I don't know fantasy baseball. I don't know to what extent. I'm not enough of a sports person to really know how ubiquitous fantasy sports are generally, and if that's an American thing or if it exists elsewhere. I'm not, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Um, but there were quite a few, I think, American clues in this puzzle, um, or at least several. We had Old Glory, the flag. We had Vail, Colorado. We had TCU, the school in Fort Worth, which I had to sort of just assume was correct based on the nicest. We had ROTC. Um, what else? Anything else? Probably some other things. Uh, in any case, let me know. I'm always curious to know how this sort of thing strikes people. We had a fairly gentle theme, I would say. And one of those themes that you can, you don't really need to understand how it works in order to get the answers. They're relatively straightforward, but it was nice in the sense that I sort of enjoyed, <laughs> I actually really enjoyed the misdirection here of fantasy and mystery. I wonder if that was intentional. I sort of suspect it was because it put me, it, 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 was, it was clever in the sense that those two words really do feel as though they belong together for a particular reason. And that reason wasn't the reason that they ultimately were tied together. They were tied together in a totally different way that was that was just as valid, and in, in some ways even more, I think, made them match better. Um, but when I saw them first on their own, it put me down a train of thought, and the, the sort of revised realization, I thought, was fun. So well done, Stella Zavatovsky. Good, solid Monday puzzle, I think. Again, do let me know how you fared. I always enjoy watching people's discussions. And in fact, in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which I mentioned in the preamble to this video, um, pretty much every day, someone posts a thread in the New York Times crossword channel in there uh, in which people discuss the crossword of the day. And people often do share how how they found the particular puzzle, any stumbling points that they had, and that sort of thing. I always enjoy reading that. I always go and read it after I've, after I've done the puzzle and, and sort of keep tabs on it. So let me know, either there or in the comments, either way. 
So yes, I hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do subscribe. Subscribe to the series, and then you will see the, the channel, that is, and then you'll see each of these videos in the series as they're posted each morning, according to your notification preferences. And if you think you know someone who might like it, please do pass it along. You could um, you could make a particular recommendation to someone specific, or you could pass it on to your internet uh, home, I suppose, whatever that may be on social media or elsewhere. I would very much appreciate it. It's the only way I have to spread the word about this thing. That, I suppose, and when you subscribe, I think it maybe helps out with the YouTube algorithm, which to which we're all subjected now. We all live in a world of algorithms, and this is a way in which you can help me with mine. And if you want to directly support the channel, you can do so by pledging to the Patreon campaign, a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency at patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link in the description field underneath each video. And there you can find, as I said earlier, a raft of bonus videos and an additional channel in the Discord chat server. But also, if you back at a certain level, an exclusive mug, one which I am very much looking forward to obtain attaining myself, and which I think I will be doing in a couple of weeks after we tick over into December and I back my own Patreon for another month, I will be sent the mug. And I'm told it is of very high quality. It is a good, well-made, well-printed mug. You'll have to come to your own decision about the quality of the design, which I <laughs> which I created, so I'm, I'm less equipped to objectively comment on that. But I think it looks nice. It says, it says let's check the crosses and has the Daily Solve logo. And I'll show you once I have one in my own possession. At that same level, um, people who, who are entitled to the mug are also entitled to be thanked at the end of these videos. And today, I would like to thank Funny JK, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you, Funny JK. I'm serious. Thank you, Funny JK. No joke. And also, thank you to Hood Monster and Shantanu. Your ongoing, your recurring support is very much appreciated. Thank you so much for helping this um, become a sustainable enterprise for me. And that's it. That's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking sticking it out. Thanks for, so yes, thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. And I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Tuesday puzzle, another, I would imagine, fairly approachable crossword to continue helping us ease into the week. So please do return for that. I hope to see you there. And until that point, have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.